so hello everyone uh, I'm planning to do a little mapping with every door and I thought it would be a nice idea to record it so it's kind of like let's play but with mapping something like uh, Gregory does but in longer format with me showcasing different options you can have with every door but of course primary mapping So, without further ado, let's start! I brought my nice camera with me and the first thing we need to do when starting mapping is just take out the phone and launch Everdoor. Uh, so, basically downloading the data And uh, for the time being, let's go see what first we, we got here. We got uh, uh, Kindergarten, which already has a number of levels. It's that one, but it's not marked as having a roof and made of bricks. Okay. So this is kind of things that you do uh, when you're just moving. Like nothing special, just marking everything you see. Like see these houses in the distance. Uh, they of course they don't. Um, They have like eight levels mapped, but no roof shape and no material. So these kind of things you can just do by yourself. Like all these garages, carbon plaster and stuff like that. But first uh, I came here to map this very 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 long building as you can see it's like so long uh, it's of course uh, mapped a uh, number of levels so but uh, I'm going to map every entrance and by entrances I mean these round white things uh, I have already prepared, of course, uh, a few months ago I uh, opened JOSM and using the high resolution satellite imagery uh, available for the entire Estonia, I added entrances, location of entrances to all buildings in this area. They're obviously access private, because I've yet to see a single entrance in Tallinn that's uh, not closed to general public and type staircase so what we're looking at is first whether it's wheelchair accessible I'd say this is more like no because of this metal because of this metal thing and numbers numbers are written uh, on the each entrance so 1-15 okay and it marked in yellow and also I switched the subtitle image that's very convenient and what you do now is basically walk around uh, take note of every number 1630 and map it that's you might say not very entertaining uh, 31, 45 oh, but uh, well being Italian it's pretty fun because uh, I don't know the weather is fine it's like the last days 
wait, 55. Uh, last days of uh, warm weather. It's around 10 degrees outside, which is pretty warm for Tallinn. 56, 70. Uh, and yeah, basically I didn't plan to go out today, but decided that why not? 7185 Because like this is the final time we can uh, record all these yellow leaves around all this autumn I don't know feel of everything. So, like last year, I went out to make a photos of everything with the idea to make um, like a magazine, a zine, <laughs> what it's called, uh, like uh, Ace Ma in, uh, in the fall. I didn't do it, but still. Uh, I had a nice walk and like a couple dozens lovely photos. And this year's fall will be immortalized in <laughs> this uh, Let's Map video. Or like you see, uh, just 10 apartments in the entire staircase. And the building is uh, has five stories which means uh, just two apartments per floor uh, so I guess they might be pretty big and yeah just going out apartment after apartment and I did freeze pretty much just two left this is happening much faster than I expected one five six one seven zero okay. yeah I still have to walk into the street Italian is not very safe in that regard but we're slowly moving there, I hope. So now we're done with this building and moving to the next one. And there's another one. So I don't know. They're both very interesting and I really want to cover both of them. So yeah, let's go to this very tall and very loud one and as you can see on the map it's actually two buildings 85 and 87 which means they got at least two separate entrances and also they're in white being in white means they don't have even high information so now what we need to do is just count number of floors Oh, so one, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and I'd say basement floor should also count for so fifteen. Uh, so one five. Okay, wait, no. Uh, it's a um, plaster and it's an apartment buildings. And the one next to it is also 15 plaster apartment building. Okay. So that's like the essential thing is done. Now I just turn off the phone and walk around. 
look for entrances to the numbers. Sorry for the noise, it's uh, inevitable. So what I found is Tamsarete uh, 85 is number of building, but I don't have apartment numbers. What I do have is all these post boxes inside. But we will wait for it. Now we have uh, Imbus Atelier. Uh, I think it's uh, just a uh, thing where people like Atelier. So it's time to switch to POI mode and to add a POI here. This is the thing that I like the most about walking is like uh, uh, you find all these small shops services that are not on any map and you have no way of finding them uh, unless you just go there so it's called Suda Ru Ka and I think this is also in Estonian working with my phone with one hand is not very great it's wheelchair accessible uh, obviously doesn't have Wi-Fi no idea about the cards but it has telephone number it's really great so it's like uh, 524 9416 okay. And it has open hours. So open hours, it is a really great feature. Like just Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Ah, one hand. 8.30, 17. And Tuesday and Thursday, 11, 18. Done. Safe. Yeah, we're done. Now, uh, no idea how to get apartment numbers and I don't see anybody here, so I think we should just mark that the entrance is here. It's wheelchair accessible, but we don't have any flat numbers. And let's go to another one. Ah, wait, no, no, let's not. Just nearby, we got another POI. Uh, that's hairdressers. So again, no information at all about it, but at least we can edit shop hairdresser called Studio Geron Studio Geron we got building number no open hours it's not wheelchair accessible and basically that's all we have safe now oh, let's Oh, do you have this? There's 100 dent dentists on the other side. There's Calplus, but I'm not sure about that. I think that's for another time. Like, one of the most important things is to focus. <laughs> like, if we're mapping this side of the road, we're mapping this side of the road. What we have here? Uh, this is a beauty salon for animals, for dogs and cats, mostly dogs, I think. So I wonder if they have a tag for this, like pet, uh, I have no idea, ah, pet grooming, 
here so again this uh, it's uh, called master groom master groom and no opening hours but you can see it's not wheelchair accessible yeah safe okay let's go uh, wait no we got Tamsa de Kescos advertisement uh, but now we have to backtrack because now I want to collect entrance numbers on that five-story building uh, let's go where the grass is like I don't uh, want the sun <laughs> getting in the way so look this playground is nice and actually it's not mapped so let me just take a look uh, micro mapping mode trees and yeah it's not mapped so but we can see it uh, sorry for not visible but I have to just make this playground to edit because playgrounds are important no name no surface just playgrounds playgrounds are important because it's not as important when you live here but when you're a tourist many times I have opened uh, maps.me or organic maps now uh, and just search for children playgrounds because in big cities they're not granted like they, it's really hard to find them and more than that often playgrounds uh, are mapped but you don't know what's actually in there like you might come there and they're just one swing and that's all or a sandbox that's pretty really disappointed when you have children of different ages just wanting to play and socialize and you get there and they're like a dog there and nobody else I will just start mapping all these things like uh, while talking and this entrance is wheelchair accessible good for them uh, so it is really frustrating to not being able to find a good playground uh, like this is one of the basic facilities you look for when you're with children another one would be uh, well obviously uh, toilets with diaper changing tables and this is all they are also hard to find oh look it's open <laughs> uh, they're also hard to find like people just don't map them because people don't need them oh look uh, this uh, trash dispensers waste disposals but as i see on the micro mapping screen they're already mapped so we won't yeah and all the things like uh, diaper changing tables like playgrounds like daycares nursery centers uh, they ought to be on a map because they have real uh, measurable usefulness like you're saving a, a lot of time for parents but you actually aren't like the last state of the map shown people start thinking about that only after they become parents themselves and uh, when that happens they they shouldn't actually map these things they should care for their children <laughs> and the data should all uh, 
already be there and this is I don't know how to fix it because well it's not fixable oh look a stone I sorry but I have a real urge to map this stone that's just mappers for you so I entered micro mapping mode and tap and I wonder if I just type stone here oh yeah unattached stone boulder no name no nothing but I really like it okay let's go to Magda Mission Podi whatever <sighs> so yeah things we should map and things that need to be mapped uh, and things that we map are different things because we map for ourselves and when you're I'd say privileged like you're able to not, not don't have any injuries uh, are male wife children you map fun things well as you should like no, not to that i would make you <laughs> map other things uh, and fun is not always what what is needed this is interesting but i see there's a new building built of let's say six stores and i have even no idea if it's mapped it is but not the number of stores six uh, i think it's plaster apartments and what's nice about it is that it has apartment numbers in so such a big letters 132 uh, private wheelchair accessible and another one in the distance uh, good thing i don't need glasses yet 3364 oops sorry 64 uh, access private wheelchair accessible staircase okay yeah now to this weird building of two stories plaster I really like the staircase and like the first duty of a mapper is to go where people usually don't go so we don't see anybody up there but I'm really interested in what's up there so let's do this and it feels like this is a kind of shopping center like family hairdressers in manicure and here we almost don't have anything i'll switch to the map and i'll start mapping everything so peri yuxur this is family hairdresser oh, let's start hairdresser uh, I know this is a, a bad practice to have a name oops typing with one hand is sucks <laughs> uh, to have a name copied from type but uh, sometimes it's like kind of obvious thing to do 10 18 10 15 15 0 and doesn't work on sundays uh, so as we have seen no wheelchair accessibility uh, and i don't know now there are actually two hairdressers Yuxur, yeah, <laughs> I have no idea how it happens but we have to add both uh, so 
what I have added. I have no idea who I added, but let's just do it all again. Uh, and I'm tired of typing the name, so I just copy these opening hours. 10, 19, 10, 18, and Sunday, 10, 15. And here we see also phone number. I was not tag in OpenStreetMap for <laughs> for the name. So it's 55634. Uh, typing with one hand is abysmal. 237. Uh, safe. Now, on the other side, it's uh, kind of childcare facility in Russian. Everything is in Russian. Mental arithmetics. Mental arithmetic sounds like the thing Russians do right now regarding the war. Sorry for that. Child nursery child care. It's called like you know mental gymnastics, mental arithmetics, mental bodybuilding, mental um, mapping. Mental mapping is what people do instead of actual mapping. Like it's easier, right? <laughs> uh, not accessible, but we have an URL. Sorrow boom. All this mapping helps uh, practice typing on this small screen and have a phone. Like when I changed my phone just a couple months ago for state of the map because I need to do a lot uh, I had really hard time getting used to this new screen and new keyboard Ekran Abbey so this is like mobile repair facility let's do this I hope we have a tag for mobile repair uh, and we don't hmm. I wonder how do I <sighs> okay I don't know so ah electronic repair I think let's just type it type in repair repair electronics repair shop so this will do so it named Ek Ran Abi ah, Ekrani Abi yeah I'm learning Estonian and it goes pretty well let's just copy to name it uh, 10 18 Low five ten fifteen. No, uh, and no information. Yoga studio. No idea what happens here, but I see there are lots of things here like magic school for children and robotics and uh, clothes store and rough family time so i think we need to map this rough family it's kind of sports center i'd say sports oh sports club I don't know. Let's let it be sports club. It feels like sports club. <laughs> so common name, Ra family. I wonder if there's any relation to the well-known god with this name. No idea. Uh, no opening hours. Uh, but who cares? At least it's got a telephone 
5880814 and URL the web.rafe.com rafe really and also it's got Facebook how to my Facebook you just tap on this circle and choose Facebook and it's ra fe mele dot telling oops yeah so okay let's save this is enough now you see there are people here which I didn't expect so this is clothing store it's finally something like more common but you see how how dense all the amenities are here clothing store it's called Solomi so hello me typing with one one hand well I'm sure you know by now uh, так. discounts so Monday Friday 10 17 Saturday 10 15 again I all for 15 I always have to tap that uh, bu additional button okay and it also has Facebook solo me read it safe now um, there's another hairdresser called Diana which is three hairdressers in a row I wonder how that happened so it's six seven zero three zero nine nine and now this is uh, household items Koduk Albert so let's map it as well how how do you even household items let's just oh yes houseware store I absolutely love ID editor uh, presets uh, so it doesn't have a name but it has open hours 10, 18 uh, 10, 17 okay no I hope accepted and here we have operator Carte no oh you safe oh. Montessori last cascos okay so this is also a child care facility so just uh, let's add child care again so common name Montessori I guess Last uh, 
Cascos Children's Center. Ah, typo. Okay. Estonian address. No open hours. Uh, but uh, it has URL. Uh, www. Talk Labs. Smart Child. Dot A. Safe. So you can see how mapping shopping centers might be tiring. Like so many shops on a very small, very small area. So this is Casituba is a cat's house. What maybe? What it does? I have absolutely no idea. Let's just let's just go to their website and see. <laughs> I have no idea. So, Pesaleidia Dotea. So, when when we, we get to a store where we, we don't have any idea what it does, there are two options. We can try googling it. What's your idea? I'm a piece of We can try googling it, or we can go to them and just. So this is uh, like. for found uh, house of found cats and on the website they have a list of cats 5000 pets found their home uh, up to this September they are so pretty now we are watching cats instead of mapping ok I am sorry for that although that might be a better way to spend our time <laughs> so, how, how does it called in English? I have no idea. Let's just pet. It's not petting zoo. It's animal shelter, I hope. And it's called Pesa Le Idia. I'm really happy I found this because it's not like common. The first one I found. Now we have to add English. Wait, it's not English. Well, okay, I don't know how it's English. Uh, I don't have any like open hours. I don't know about cards, but it has a phone. I wonder why are not that common such things. Like, you might expect to find such amenities like at every corner or at least one for every district of the city. But this is the first one. Now, if somebody asks for a cat, I know where to send them. And that is cats. Safe. I'm really happy there is a tag with a value cat. Like, how cool is that? <laughs> uh, like, th this is what makes mapping cool. Like, you find things you didn't even have an idea for finding. Like, Before this, like 10 minutes ago, somebody asked me where, uh, how can I help them with getting a cat, I would have no idea. I might send them to a shop, I might, I don't know, recommend somebody I know, but now we have like an animal shelter and this would be 
the first place I will send people now. This is amazing. Yeah, I just a beauty salon. Ah, massage kiosks. Okay, and now, okay, sports shop. Sports shop. Oh, this is, looks nice. It's like for gymnastics. Okay, I, I plan to enter a shopping mall later, but I see think having found this one, I won't need to. Sport shop. Yeah, found it. So it's called Le Verona. Le Ver and you might notice how few people are there in <laughs> are here in Thailand. Like nothing ever happens here. Uh, which is great. I one of the reasons I moved to Estonia is to get away from all the noise because previously I lived in Moscow and Moscow is awful like I wouldn't recommend living there but people move there because many people means they got a reason to be there and what reason there can be for moving Moscow well money obviously but I don't know That only works when wait phone number is wrong. It doesn't compute. Okay. Because you see wrong phone format. Let me just five three four one two two no zero. I don't know. And it goes Facebook. So your like motivation stop being money and I'm very lucky to not have that motivation then being in Moscow like loses all the like meaning like why would you want to experience that long trail times and stuff like that Missioni pot. I have absolutely no idea what is Missioni pot, but it's already here and it says it's six years old clothing store. So now we can move it to proper place. And also add information from its flyer. So 10, 18, uh, low pipe, 11, 15. You see, weekdays are marked with just one letter here. So this is actually a problem when you map in the foreign countries. Because, well, <sighs> look us up at Facebook I don't care because in, in some cities they use Monday Friday or uh, like things that are I don't know well, you can understand okay it, it says it has chocolate and flowers and yeah I see there is a bakery and a gift shop I think so now is it a bakery or is it a gift shop hello <laughs> um, uh, 
and here it says chocolate flowers which might mean it's both so how do we map this ten chocolate flowers I think we should map it as a bakery still or confectionery even confectionery candy maker let me nope not chocolate um, so they'll have pure cut ah yeah I see so Tuesday yeah I was started talking about uh, mapping foreign countries where you get an issue that you don't even know how weekdays are named like um, I had this in uh, Italy when we, we, we came here there for state of the map conference and obviously people would want to map there but I come like to the first bakery or pizza place whatever and in the open hours they have uh, words I don't understand like not a single one I have no idea Instagram <sighs> of course this shop is on Instagram like why did I adapt it yeah so I had to use Google Translate but the result it didn't like imprint in my memory I still don't know how days are called there so this is an issue and I will live in Estonia for a year and a half and okay so this was mapped as a clothing store but it obviously isn't so let's switch it to hardware store I think there are clothing there are so many things in there I think it's like a general store let's leave it at that general ah how do we even change the type many people ask me that and I think it's even in FAQ but you just tap on the title and enter oops general store and now it's general store yeah again very elastic cascos but I don't see any and again we got a beauty salon so I live in Estonia for a year and a half and I learned all the weekdays obviously like on the first week uh, hairdresser no name but it has open hours so till 18 let's say 10 to 18 probably no idea and it works on Sundays till 15 I really need to do something with these end times and it's got a phone six seven three one five one six and I think that's all finally we get to end all this and two more staircases that one goes to apartment building and that one goes to Grossi Toy Dupot to shopping let's now you see how cool is that like everything mapped here I love this 
this is like what, what, why I'm mapping. It's not for having a fun time, although I, I do have a fun time, if, <laughs> even if it doesn't show on the recording. But uh, also to collect them all. Oh, God. Like collecting them all is why I map. So what do we learn having descended down the steps? This shopping center has two floors, which means, and it's called Tamsara Keskus, um, which means that for every single thing we have mapped, we have to add floor. It's on second floor, which means level one. It's not hard. Uh, it, we just have to click, click, click on everything. And right now it doesn't show that we need to add floor, it doesn't show amenities without it, which is not great because it, it would show them after uploading. And uh, we can do this. Our family. Cartena. Nope. Ah, it doesn't even have an address. Yeah, safe. Yeah, Ekrani Abbey. Now, all these are marked on, as on the second floor which means now we can add things on the first floor and also we need to add that this is a shopping mall which is not added anywhere here so i don't know how to do it i just type mall and i don't know <laughs> add it as a point Sare. And shopping malls should not be points, as you might know. So what we will do then is to add a note. But first, so when does it close? I have absolutely no idea. But if we look closer, not sure if you can see it, but there is a 9, so it's 19, and 10, 17 on just Saturdays. Safe. Now, can we enter? Yes, we can. Let's see what's in here. The smell of fish is overwhelming and the list of everything and the map should i make a photo i don't know but now we can map something at least this fishing shop i i don't even know actually whether we have a tag for a fishing shop like if i type fish It has a fishing shop, but is it a shop for fishes or shop for sea? There is a seafood shop, and I see aquariums and I see seafood. It will be a seafood shop. There is no name here, but open hours 10, 18, 10. 17. Uh, yes, accessible. And yes, cars are accepted. But here on this map we see that 4 is Pepe Kala Kala Pod. And that is the name. Now, do we have to map all of this if we have it on the map? the entrance i'd say no i just don't want to spend a lot of time on that 
I just go inside and see. And open and ours are different here. But I'll close my eyes on that. And this is too much. You know, I actually don't know how long I'm recording. Uh, I'll just walk and see. But the thing is, this is like the problem with shopping malls. We found toilets. This is so important, as you might know. Toilets have to be added. Sorry, first floor. It's public. Uh, but you have to have 20 cents. So uh, 0 0.20 yes payment type cash safe so we got paid toilets uh, again choco flowers kung fu I hope they know it Uh, there's much less mapping than expected, actually. I recorded the map on the camera, but I didn't actually read it. So this is a surprise to me. So, dry cleaners. Again, useful stuff. We don't get a good GPS reception here, but it's not non-existent. Dry cleaner called Mono Clean. So at first I did not want to map the first floor because we're doing this for a very long time and I wanted to go map some buildings. But on the other hand, such uh, shopping centers or service centers, I wouldn't called dry cleaning as a shop are important locally because they are not like obvious so this label doesn't have any information but if you take a very close look then you'll see phone number and email so when you live nearby you might not know that you have dry cleaners right under your like window and knowing these things is important basically that's the entire reason I created every door so that people know what happens around them it's not as much a mean of for mapping oh the sound was awful as a means for learning learning what happens around you as mapping should be snail room I wouldn't map nails but why not see my position move slowly yes. <laughs> ah. so nail room there are some things I uh, I I don't want to map obviously like beauty salons, hairdressers, because there are too much of them. It's closed and ha doesn't have any information. There's too much of them. And I'm pretty sure they will like 
disappear in a month or so because that happens but if I don't then uh, it's it's not, the map is not complete <laughs> uh, why like that's a really dumb reason for not mapping and I really should save the time like this beauty salon isn't even open all the day just by appointment but it might help somebody like Google has uh, these notifications like uh, your the POI that you have added the shop you have added was uh, looked at by like thousand people this is really powerful and I'd like to have that in OpenStreetMap but of course it is not possible in OpenStreetMap why? a obvious reason first it's hard to know who met <laughs> something and it's uh, there's so many uh, software that use OpenStreetMap this is either a bookshop or a toy shop I'm leaning for the second uh, so POI might be used uh, in many many apps organic maps Osmand I don't know Locus <laughs> uh, I'm quickly running out of options here uh, I don't know <laughs> uh, but I hope there are many apps online websites definitely <sighs> this toy shop doesn't have any name I'll do it so you can just cannot get any statistics 10 18 30 10 16 just on seven days so it's basically yeah impossible you, you have to collect from everyone and it's not like you cannot you just people who use OpenStreetMap they usually more knowledgeable about data collection and they usually opt out of that so uh, as mm, I don't know experience with of Mozilla shows if people have an option of not sending uh, statistics they will choose it which is like perfectly fine oh by, uh, by the way it is got like wrong address it's not 87 89 uh, so people opt out of collecting statistics if they can which is fine but uh, it's uh, prevents us from doing these feedbacks like thousand people have used your your data with the internet it prevents us from adding more incentives to map it prevents us from making mapping more like oh, Lily Studio, first florist shop here. I am really rejoiced. Uh, so we can't drive engagement without uh, spying on users, which makes me think that if spying on users is bad, then maybe driving engagement is also bad. The, the entire like notion of engagement might be not ideal 
And when you think in these terms, you accept the rules that Google and Facebook have imposed on you, which you shouldn't. And that's very worrying, like, like capitalism. <laughs> and now I should <laughs> sit down and turn the camera on myself and talk for two hours straight. Like, arbitrary set of rules that appeared out of nowhere and everybody has to follow. Ah, Yuxur. Okay, let's map this Yuxur. Uh, but, but when you like look deeper into into from where this rules even appeared, then uh, you find out that they are not like they are not set in stone. People invented these rules, or worse, corporations invented those rules, and they can be like dismantled like that. Like there are many things that just people invented, but they are not set in stone. So I found a name for Toy Store and it's Erudite. Erudite. Safe. Oh, finally, we have mapped the Tamsari Cascus. Nope, we haven't. So. Ah, uh, this is a weird thing to put into shopping mall, <laughs> but this is a shop for granite stones or for cemeteries. And <laughs> I know tom tombstones, that's how it's called. And of course, we do not have a tag for that but we should so I just add tomb tombstone shop fix me right it's called Kohila uh, Kiwi stone to work Koda house. And it's a proper POI 10 to 19. Uh, Leuna means break. So we just tap add a break and tap 13 to 14. Uh, and 10 to 15 again. I have added 15 so many times and it is still not on the list which is bad it should be I will have to like <sighs> confirm why that part of code doesn't work because it, it should appear there I have no idea why it, why it doesn't this is a pet grooming salon. Mm, okay. And it's like the second one. Pet grooming store. I think. I have no idea. It's called Buncha Grooming. Buncha. Uh, it's like bunch of okay <laughs> I wonder why it's not in Estonian so first no open hours 
no nothing but a phone 5377533 it would be fun if I get home and I learn that microphone doesn't work <laughs> but I hope it will so Facebook Facebook bunch okay safe okay so now what is this this is another store called USA Today outlet which new shop and it's obviously a closing store with some other things probably from America but I'm pretty sure it is from China which again we have to add because we're committed to mapping 100% 100% USA wait today outlet I don't know if outlet is a part of a name but I sure hope so and it's not 89 it's uh, completely different that is 93 I think it's 93 like Brandy Keskus okay let's hope this is for this shop um, 10 18 uh, 10 16 and it doesn't have any anything any contact information it means we can leave And this is a reader point. Reader point means it's a container for used clothes. Uh, containers for used clothes are actually in the micro mapping section, so we can double check that it's not there and just <sighs> somebody smokes and just add them. So it's a recycling container for clothes. Done. Ah, uh, safe. Let's go further. I so don't like when somebody smokes. So, this is Tallinn for you. There are not much people around. It's very green. It's pretty warm. Like, not as cold as you would expect. Uh, the sea being just couple kilometers away and everything is Estonian in Estonian so gross to the port let me show you my screen uh, it says here the amenity is 12 years old let's look at history somebody named Kirtl have added this store in 2011 and now we can confirm it like set open hours it works all week from this is unfortunate from 9 to 22 and it's accessible cards obviously are accepted and I wonder if there is any information inside. Like uh, right on the door, it says, uh, like there it says, uh, it's site name and it's Grossi 
той до К обад е This name is so long and also operator name in big letters AS OG Electra Safe and we're done Let's just check yeah it's one uh, plaster and it's retail okay we have added the city now we can continue what do we do now uh, let me consult the map where do we go i think we can go to that big building and just look for other entrances but I'm not feeling like searching for other entrances I think we'll leave it because I truly don't know if there are apartment marks and I don't want to be disappointed so I'll just go over the grass patch and collect uh, apartment numbers from this five-story building so yeah that's mapping for you uh, it sometimes is a lot of walking when you collect uh, entrances but it is also a lot of uh, mapping same things like uh, we just found three hairdressers in a row uh, in that uh, Tamsari Cascus this happens <laughs> but uh, like you should keep your eyes on the prizes they say and the prize would be love and adoration from all the other opposite mappers for you have done the bad job you could do in the project just you went out and mapped and yeah I'm being a bit sarcastic so now I'm gonna map entrances from here not will share accessible alas but just spend a little time on mapping these Uh, 1630 I really okay yeah. I see this common pattern near many houses in Estonia like parking cars at the entrances so you go out of your building and immediately you find yourself at the parking which must be pretty common for Americans maybe but it should not be the norm like yeah it is much convenient that way you don't have to walk a kilometer to your car and stuff but come on <laughs> like no, it doesn't have to be extreme like you could park your car in 100 meters and it will still be okay it's not like your legs are broken or anything but th that would make uh, leaving the house actually pleasant like you wouldn't have to maneuver yourself behind cars to get somewhere you would be able to like allow kids to go and play by themselves and you know cars are the main reason kids don't they are not allowed to go out and play because it has become dangerous on the street 
So now, when you want your kids to go somewhere from home, you have to go with them. And you have to go to specially designed places like children playgrounds. Instead of just letting them play on the street near your house. Which means that children are almost never alone. Uh, which of course like affects their dependency. Like, they are more attached to their parents than ever. Or there is an alternative, which is uh, mobile phones and tablets. Instead of uh, just going out and playing with friends, uh, you can buy them a phone or a tablet and they will be entertained. And you can understand that's also not a good way to spend your childhood. And what for we are doing all this? Just so we won't have to walk extra 100 meters to our parked cars. Uh, is it like smart? <laughs> nope, of course not. It just how it is. Like uh, car owners are the most loud group uh, in any city. It's nice. <laughs> um, so you can do anything to just make them walk a bit more or drive a bit slower. Because politically it would be suicide. So we have cars, we have parking spots near entrances, we have uh, six lane streets which shouldn't even happen and we have car owners which are still not happy because there, there are traffic lights they have to stop on um, and they have to wait in turns and stuff like that. It's, it's a fight you cannot win, but politically you cannot do anything. At least you can, I don't know, <sighs> rent in videos. So we came to a different house. You see, this ends in 59. These are things that you cannot map remotely. And the problem with these numbers is that Mapillary or grab cam or whatever it's called, street cam, cannot help you. Since like uh, these plates are too small for the camera to catch them. So you see on the map there is a building right near this building and the building is this. Should it be marked as a building? I have no idea, but since it's there, I just add some properties, it's metal. I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. So mapping with mapillary has like limited usefulness. But mapping on foot, on feet, uh, also is quite limited, obviously, as you can see from this very video. Like, what's the problem? The problem is that I'm very slow. And it's not only because I have to narrate during, like, uh, my mapping. You see, there is a new playground which is very nice and it's not on the map, not even on the imagery yet because imagery for Estonia is updated once a year 
but it's roughly here and we can edit playground send save yeah let's go further uh, so this mapillary thing is you're just making photos and then have to map everything and that's where like the process breaks because to map you, you can't do this automatically because like there is very limited first time I choose as I said very limited I pushed limited because it's like the first time I see something for wheelchair users I wouldn't say it's good but it's limited I'm I'm very sure that inside there's a staircase still so I'm putting it limited yeah so there's a very limited uh, number of things you can uh, get from photos automatically like and even those are not yet like uh, uh, detected for example building heights or uh, I don't know number of lanes on streets signs which are is already done or I don't know facade material uh, surfaces and all that requires a lot of processing power it's very limited in different countries uh, building shape is different and uh, colors are different so you have to retrain the neural network for every country so this doesn't always work but in the end even if you finally like made all the networks for detecting like uh, all these things it is still uh, not everything you basically got building and road attributes and building and road attributes is not the entire map it's just I'd say a base map and by base map I mean it serves as a base for proper useful mapping and which means this it's by itself is not a proper useful mapping and well uh, yeah I see a pub that's five years old but I clearly see it here let me just use the zooming function yeah you see Osmar I don't see openers here but I believe that this is mostly so I just I will confirm it Whew. now I plan to go to these buildings and for that I just turn ah you know people say that when you're mapping you should upload upload often and I have been mapping for more than an hour now but I didn't upload so I think it's high time I pushed this button <laughs> uploading changes and how many 96 changes sent to API 96 so I have walked around for more than an hour and made 96 edits which would be very bad if I aimed for high statistics numbers like you know this 
uh, websites like uh, Pascal Nice's uh, OSM stats or other counting things and they all count how many edits people have made and these numbers are like highly unfair like in this hour I could have sat in my home opened JOSM and traced like I don't know dozen rivers with hundred nodes each and it would be like several thousands edits recorded and if I cared for stats I would be much higher on this this way so things you do from home like satellite imagery mapping or importing stuff using rapid editor are get, uh, produce much higher numbers which produce more satisfaction because you get higher on statistics tables like in ratings and if you're higher in these ratings that means uh, you are higher like you are better mapper right because you have mapped more and mapping more is why we're here right like we're mappers we map <laughs> but um, when you and, and that uh, i think that is what actually taught to novice mappers that uh, you bring more value to open seat map when you sit home and map when you open humanitarian tasking manager uh, choose a task and you actually like map a lot the more tasks you completed the better mapper you are and i'd say this is all backwards again metal building one story not sure if it will be this means that um, how do I say it numbers are everything again another thing that companies made you believe oh look small playground I came here for uh, playground is already mapped like I, I opened this micro mapping and I see this orange dot which in legend marked as playground so yeah I'm pretty happy with that yeah so we have led to believe and I, I wouldn't even say this this is because of corporations but it just uh, I think it was from start of OpenStreetMap like yeah we have counted nodes ways and relations from the beginning of the project and of course we associated these numbers with people like we built ratings for countries for regions so you could find yourself in these regions and like uh, boast to your friends to your uh, peers in the forum that look how much I mapped and how did you map that? you open JOSM because you should use JOSM <laughs> I guess uh, and you have 
uh, traced satellite imagery. How do I know that? Because when you actually go out and map, you do not collect much data, as we have just seen. 92 edits? I don't remember. So, <laughs> the problem with collecting data outside is that you don't get to be in any ratings, which is unfortunate, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better word. And this needs to be fixed. So, yeah, I have this idea. Uh, let me just walk around this very high building. Uh, it's plaster apartments and look for amenities. And then just numbers. Yeah, so I have this idea that since now we have every door editor, I think we might want to make ratings for people using every door editor. Uh, so that uh, when people have used it, they know they can boost something. So I have 94, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 99. So this is an entrance. Uh, let us map it. I move it here. Oops. What I've done? No idea. Let me try again. 199. Yes. Okay. <sighs> yeah, so it would be nice to have a website that shows only how much point of interest interest you have mapped. Maybe it will tip the scales towards people who actually map, but I wouldn't be so sure of that. What is that? Looks interesting. Nothing here. But again, I don't know. Well, it might be useful. Like when we made the editor into maps.me, uh, we actually uh, added ratings, statistics. What did we do? We, uh, I wrote a script that just uh, followed change, set st change stream. And, well, uh, yeah, uh, sun, sun is not great. <sighs> right, let me show where are we moving. We are moving toward that high building. Yeah, so I, I was just very curious how and what people map with maps with me. And also I wanted to make a tool for mappers, because as you might know, mappers are very protective of their map. <laughs> which brings us to the topic of uh, being protective for OpenStreetMap, which is... You know, and whose map is that? Like, is OpenStreetMap my map? Is it our map, as in communism? Whose map it is? And this question leads to like, who has to take care of it? Like, who has to protect it? And if the map is not anybody's, then it doesn't need protection. Or does it? Like, forest is nobody's, but 
you still need protection because of you know deforestation and stuff. So every mapper has a different answer to this question. Obviously. I just start mapping from here. Because uh, limited, I guess. Okay, I'll tap here. Limited, yeah. I know, I stop, yes. I think that's a yes. Because some mappers like me consider the map like uh, just means to an end. It's uh, something intermediate. It and it doesn't. Well, I think the map doesn't need protection because there are so many mappers. Because if somebody breaks something then somebody else will find it and fix it. Of course, it doesn't always work with it. But uh, in my area it does. Like if somebody adds a wrong shop or deletes some entrance or adds some benches that are not there I will see it because I have every door in my hand <laughs> yeah like this I have every door in my hand and I compare it to everything I see and I can fix everything but uh, for many areas I don't. I wouldn't uh, visit all the things I have mapped in Florence, for example, which is like expected. Like nobody expects uh, me visiting Florence. So is this a wheelchair? Yes or wheelchair? No. Like I think you can get up there. Ah, uh, okay, it's limited. Yeah. So again, I I'm not expected to like monitor changes to things I have mapped in Florence. And but am I expected to monitor changes around my house? Like can I just map and forget or am I like bound to uh, that map area and if something goes wrong like I'll be the first person to get a blame for it I have no idea actually like I don't know maybe because somebody needs to be like responsive responsible if nobody is responsible can we even trust the map? And yeah, as you may, might have guessed, I have answers to all these questions, but these are mm, unconventional answers. Like, usually people think that the map is important. The map in the moment, like right now, is important. If something is broken on the map, the map is broken. And with OpenStreetMap, you are like can be hundred percent sure it is broken. Like of course, there hasn't been a moment in the history of OpenStreetMap it wasn't broken. Like if you expect it to be good, then you don't know uh, OpenStreetMap <laughs> well enough. Uh, yeah, I have to fix building attributes here. 
that's like the entire reason for uh, daylight distribution existence that Facebook makes. Like to have s some map that is presumed not to be broken for at least a moment in time. For, for no, I'd say for, for a prolonged period of time. Like the moment you fix something on the map, you can be sure somebody <laughs> breaks something. Like it's never good. So, yeah. And if we don't have any expectations of OpenStreetMap of not being broken, then things become easier. Like nothing is expected. So you don't have to spend time and nerves keeping OpenStreetMap clean. So there are two entrances and when I uh, click between them I have ch choice between entrance and entrance and I know I have no idea which one will be there well of course uh, it is marked by uh, yellow dot for a fraction of a second but I just try to choose the right one so yeah H having trust and no no knowing that the map is broken is a form of trust we would save you a lot of time like you you won't fight presumed vandals instead you will just uh, do your work and yeah opposite map is broken that's fine it's like an imminent property of open seat map uh not nothing wrong here like uh, proceeds <laughs> and, and so on so yeah uh, but uh, the, the contra contrary point contra point is the word i think there is a youtube channel with that name contra points so the, the contrary point is that the map should be as best as possible at any moment of time which is a valid point right because that's what we should strive for the most correct map and in our like regions where we live we can actually provide that So, if we strive for that, we monitor the map and the moment some bad changes happen, like somebody deletes something, uh, for some reason Osmores don't like deleting, uh, we just go there and fix it. But that means like 24-7 surveillance. Oh look, this is nice. Like, you exit your building and you have a green buffer before parking this is better because children can just go there and go to that green area to play and all is good there are some buildings like this as well so yeah when you are engaged in 24 7 surveillance then uh, you don't have time for new mapping for example right <laughs> because who has time for that when the map is broken i don't know but but it like feels more reassuring i guess because it gives you an illusion of control like to give up this illusion of control you first need to believe this illusion if you don't believe if you think this is control not vision control then you like <laughs> will we'll have to monitor the map 24 7. yeah i don't know at this point what i'm doing <laughs> uh, i'm just ranting 
uh, because mapping entrances is a very monotonous job. I would say dull, but it's not dull, just monotonous. I just go from entrance to entrance uh, and map. <laughs> okay, now I'm going back. Uh, so, yeah, usually if I, if I wanted to collect entrance and scale, I would not be walking because uh, I will just take my kick scooter and move at twice the speed. I wouldn't be standing near each entrance maybe. I will uh, drive by and remember at least three, then to add them in a batch and then uh, kick scooter myself to the next one. Right, right. So here is a power substation which I very much like to map and mapping them is for some reason um, micro mapping mode it's not here so we wait it uh, yeah no yeah so we edit substation uh, substation power substation minor distribution uh, 6400 not an option that's 1000 400 and the most important is the reference code because i'm collecting every substation in the city and whenever i am and that means that means the reference number are the most important like when i have substation number 652 and substation number 50, then somewhere might be substation number 651. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure how these numbers are actually assigned. Yeah. <laughs> so, regarding entrances, like uh, I have collected uh, all entrances for my district, which is neighboring one to this one, and that is like 500 of them, I think. And I did it in probably two or three days at first i was collecting them by bicycle before i have written every door and i finished this with every door on a uh, on kick scooter and yeah at first i made a lot of photos but then i just kick scooter myself yeah so here's another building which is doesn't even have its high and it's I think one two three four five 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 floors plaster apartments and let's so this is definitely not wheelchair accessible 115 no and this one is 16.30 no I think we're nearing the end of, of this uh, last map I will consult the map but uh, I think this <laughs> is enough renting for one day and I'm pretty sure you have got a good impression of mapping this every door like oh look at these benches they're so nice and there are benches there this is like the most 
bench it uh, yard, <laughs> like house, I have found and yeah okay <laughs> this is nice uh, I think I will select micro mapping mode it has one bench mapped right in the center but really I'll just zoom in a bit and add every bench I see let's go <laughs> uh, it, it won't be long just I tap plus button bench uh, without backrest in its wood and now add the next one I think it's here ah, it's not yeah here uh, my finger slips bench and it's got all the fields pre-filled so I just tap save so you see it's pretty fast plus here uh, move move your map bench save plus another bench bench save plus you see these yellow spots are benches I have already added so it's better safe so there are benches right to the last entrance here is the last one bench safe and now let's look at the yard there's a little fancy garden in here uh, and there are two big benches okay so this bench that was already mapped it has backrest and there's another one just like that near it oh sorry you sometimes don't see the screen but uh, well manning the very long phone you know this phone has proportions like 21 to 9 so if you, if you watched a hollywood movie on it it would be very handy <laughs> but uh, for common usage it is weird like I cannot reach the top of the phone yes and right near the bench there is a waste basket that I will also add on the map tap waste basket uh, well it's metal so I can just tap metal save yeah that was a mind of micro mapping now we're back to buildings mode and continue with entrances yeah so collecting like everything is interesting that's what I wanted to convey I hope I did but your mileage may vary because uh, all the regions are different maybe in your region you will find something else to map maybe yours is not mapped well so uh, just drawing roads and buildings are already a challenge fun enough like in Western Europe, in Europe in general, it's like uh, everything has been already mapped. So <laughs> it's like 
you resort to map these small things like entrances okay now I think I'm pretty tired of all this mapping so what I'll do now is go on the final stretch final stretch means these buildings and then I'll walk towards the bus stop what? and being here is nice because as I see on the map these are all white meaning these buildings don't even have their height mapped let alone like facade material so I can set them to five-story apartment buildings it's very easy from here I don't have to open tag panels or stuff like that uh, that's very big building in the distance that has nine floors uh, yeah don't have to open tagging panels or anything I just uh, I, I don't know tap <laughs> things and that was like the, my main intention behind the editor to not be bothered with little details to not think about tags at all like you have might have noticed that I have added an entire shopping mall and not once I thought about tags which as it should be right like <sighs> so I see this gymnasium Euro gymnasium as it says on the title and it's here but it doesn't have anything so at least I could set an address to it safe yeah so uh, this is the second entrance 16 to 30 the first one is 1 to 15 uh, not wheelchair accessible this is not wheelchair accessible and 16 to 30 uh, is also not and you see there's a small <laughs> pedestrian way <laughs> like a footway just painted on the asphalt I think this is like the first time I see something like this in Tallinn uh, but as you can see it works it just not sure you can push a stroller down it but I can walk <laughs> at least um, okay. yeah so this is how you map with every door you just walk around with your front hand and you add everything you see on your way this might be tedious this might be not fun and you know the main principle of OpenStreetMap when it stops being fun you stop doing it like it is fun for me because like my motivation it comes from inside I just like to map this yellow tree and then it looks very beautiful yeah so I don't actually care uh, for the number of edits or for appreciation or I don't know for anything I just map because it's fun because it makes me go outside and going outside is I think what opposite map was created for well of course it was created for like producing 
uh, open map that anybody can use but that's for users and you always have to think what's in it for you and what's in it for you is well fun <laughs> like an option to just uh, go outside enjoy beautiful trees enjoy the wind the weather uh, and also make it useful to somebody like you're not just walking you're also collecting data that somebody might uh, use in the future like why do we even why, why do we even col collect these entrances like what is the practical use of them i don't know like if i knew i would be rich right <laughs> uh, so for me the use of this is that it makes our map fuller and that uh, i don't know uh, it is fun like collect the mold stuff but somebody might find a better use for example routing not to an address but to apartment why not things we do with every door are not for somebody these are for us like um, these are just a way for us to have fun to have a walk to enjoy weather and to make a map and as mappers what more could we wish for <laughs> yeah and that's basically it i think this is a good theme on which to end this uh, let's play so let me just thank you everyone and if i want one thing from you is to install every door and have a nice walk before snow covers everything so have a good day and goodbye